want to say good evening to everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I know I'm a little early, but I wanted to uh, catch it before uh, the sun went down. You know, I felt, felt a little some type of way because uh, my other squad members would be uh, start doing the lives from the car. And at least two of them did it, so I said, well, I guess I don't want to be left out, so I'm going to do my live from the car. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Uh, man, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the Book of Kings. Man, we certainly have. Uh, I, anyway, I don't even want to prolong the time just getting into all that, right? Um, so it was a beautiful thing. Uh, so I appreciate everybody for what they're doing. Um, so we're in Chronicles, right? And most of us, when we think about Chronicles, we say, hey, it's a bunch of names, right? And for the most part, it is. Uh, but there are some great things that are hidden in there if you just give time to think about it and allow uh, Scripture to to open itself up to, to seeing things. And, uh, yeah, it's a great thing. So um, the beauty about what we did in this group was when we first started it we chose to not just talk about the bible just because but we wanted to talk about scripture uh, and not reach and when we first started this our motto was if you see something say something if you don't see anything don't say anything right and so that was the beauty of the uh, of what what we started, and we've held true to that uh, for the most part, I believe. And so, hey, see, five minutes, right? All right, uh, thanks for joining me, babe. Um, so I'm going to get started. I won't be before you long, as the old preachers would say, right? So I'm gonna share my points. I have points this week. So now I'm in the car. I'm going to share points. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so, First Chronicles, and I'm going to do chapters 1 through 5. Again, also another thing that we, we've endeavored to do is not bore or belabor the points. Uh, we're not going to just take a chapter a day and there's nothing but names in there and, you know, it has no meaning. So, uh, but we will hold true to our integrity of this group. So, all right, so 1 Chronicles chapter 1 says the descendants of Adam were Seth. Now, I like this only for one reason, uh, because they did not name Cain and Abel, which was interesting. I was like, why wouldn't they name Cain and Abel? Um, and we're talking about purpose, right? Uh, I made the statement that DNA, uh, which the Ancestry.coms and the, the other dot-coms, you know, where people um, have become enticed to see where they came from. Uh, a lot of times it can cause <laughs> a lot of secrets to be revealed. Uh, I've noticed where people have uh, wanted to see their history. They found out that they have family members. Uh, their parents had more children uh, that they weren't aware of. And it just creates a whole big mess, right? And, and 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 that's what that does, but I, when you see why scripture is written and is written for purpose, you clearly have an understanding of ah, uh, there's purpose behind why these names are being given, because not every single name was given, right? Uh, and so if you've you've done your research uh, at any point in time about scripture, you understand that this this these scriptures were purposefully written uh, to show. Uh, the lineage of David, right, and ultimately Christ uh, from the side of Judah. And so uh, I thought that that was a beautiful thing. So Seth is what? That he's the substitute. He's the substitute uh, for the lineage because Cain killed his brother. Uh, and so it's, I just thought it was just a beautiful thing for, for the scripture just to point out that Adam uh, and Seth was his descendant. Right? <laughs> so that was good to me. Uh, so it says, Enosh, Kenan, uh, Mahala, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, 
Lamech, and Noah. And then it says the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Right? And so what, what really stuck out to me about this uh, was something that I had to go over to Genesis chapter 9. And I'll just share a point for us in regards to, to uh, Noah's sons. And then I'll... <laughs> Move on. All right, so I'm going to jump back to Genesis chapter 9, and I want to go to verse 18. And I want to I want to show something. Again, we're talking about purpose, right? Uh, this is not about a family tree. This is about purpose. And so I just want to drop, as, as my uh, other squad members would say, other nuggets, right? All right, so it says in verse 18 of chapter 9 of Genesis, the son of Noah, the sons of Noah who came out, of the boat with their father were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham is the father of Canaan. And let's keep that in mind, right? We've talked about this before, but just to point out something, just I want to show something here because something came up. It says, from these uh, three sons of Noah came all the people who now populated the earth. Amen to that, right? <laughs> So after the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard. One day he drank some wine he had made and he became drunk and lay naked inside the, his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan. I love scripture because he keeps pointing out something. But okay. Saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers, then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over there, over their, over their shoulders, and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way, so they would not see him naked. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what Ham, his youngest son, had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of, of, <clears throat> of servants to his relatives. Then Noah said, May the Lord, the God of Shem, be blessed. And may Canaan be his servant. May God expand the territory of Japheth. May Japheth share the prosperity of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but... Remember when the, okay, I don't get ahead of myself. But y'all know who Canaan is, right? And so ultimately, these families, you say, well, how in the world did we populate and get all these different tribes? Well, these families, these tribes came from these people, right? And their tribes, their tribal names, Levite, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, all these people came from the specific names of the descendants, right? And you begin to see that in Chronicles that you, you see these, the separations. But I love the fact that we see the origin of where the split came. And we talked about that in, in detail in Genesis. So I don't want to belabor that point. But I just thought it was interesting to see this moment. And then you go back and you see Chronicles uh, share something, right? So I'm going to pin that moment there because when we get to about chapter four or five, we're going to bring up something that's going to bring up something full circle uh, concerning this this <clears throat> this genealogy. So let's jump back to Chronicles. Right. All right. So I want to keep going. Through chapter one, again, we're talking about the descendants, basically. And so they began to give the lineage for Shem and the descendants of Abraham. And we know about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are, again, our patriarchs, right? To our great faith that we have today. And again, you just, again, I love the fact that there is no contradictions in scripture. And so the Bible makes it clear, uh, even, even books later, that's why they were canonized, right? Because they wanted to make sure that if there was any discrepancy that, you know, we could, we could notice them. And, and so, uh, <clears throat> you don't see any, and I appreciate that moment, right? So that's chapter one in a nutshell. Also, when you see Esau, right, when it talks about Jacob and the descendants of Esau, then you have Esau, 
the Edomites come from Esau. And again, you know, Esau uh, and Jacob were brothers. Jacob became Israel. Edom became Esau. And so at that moment, you see, uh, <laughs> you see in that moment, what? You see the separation between the brothers, and then you see the same between the nations. Right? And there were some harmonious moments there uh, because th there was some reconciliation between Esau, uh, Israel, and Edom. But even still, there was still never that, that connection that came back, right? Yeah. All right. So that's chapter one. Chapter two. I wanted to highlight something. Uh, <clears throat> in chapter two, we talk about the descendants of Israel and the sons of Israel, who is Jacob, began to talk about Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, uh, Zublin, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, uh, Natalie, Gad, and Asher, right? And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tribes, <laughs> right? Again, we, we know that these tribes came from these twelve sons, and that's how you get that, right? And it's going to be, again, a beautiful picture to see not family tree, but purpose, right? We'll get to that. But I just, again, wanted to show that. And I know we know these things. Uh, but even in, 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 in Israel, uh, you see these brothers, but they made decisions. And this is what I love about this, uh, because we always talk about our family and how important family is. But what is more important than family is, right? And in purpose, uh, when we do what God has called us to do, then family does not matter. And when I'm say family does not matter, you're going to see where in family or traditions, you have you have you have birthrights, you have uh, sonships, you have inheritance, right? That comes because of certain uh, um, because of your 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 line of birth you would see certain things were bestowed upon the oldest right but then that those things change because of purpose right we saw where esau and jacob right though some things change esau's birthright he gave his birthright up right you saw we're going to see here in a moment about one of uh jacob's sons reuben we're going to talk about him in just a moment again about what he did and that's what we got to keep in mind ladies and gentlemen that where you see all these different scenarios concerning your family uh, and even in the kingdom of God and his family, you know what I'm saying? All things are not specifically driven to each, each individual and each situation. That's why we have to pay close attention to all of these things because everything is not going to uh, to hit home with you. Everything is not going to be uh, related towards your situation. That's why we have to be careful in just cherry picking scripture. Because where you say, ah, it's going to be like that, may not be. Depends on what the purpose is, right? And so I think that's a beautiful moment as well. Um, so <clears throat> in this moment, I wanted to jump to Genesis 35 for Chronicles chapter th chapter 2. In Genesis 35, I wanted to go to verse 23. So it says, The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's oldest son. Right? Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bela, Rachel's servant, were Dan and Nephtali. Right? And then the son of Zilpah, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. Now, this is a beautiful thing because, again, if you guys pay attention, remember where Jacob's situation was, right? Jacob loved Rachel, but he married Leah first, right? So ultimately, when we understand God's law, God's perfect will, his rule, that should have been all Jacob 
uh, needed to deal with, right? And we remember the story how Rachel couldn't have, I mean, um, I don't want to get into all that. But y'all know how the story went, right? <laughs> and so Reuben was his first son, and, and, and that should have bestowed upon him certain rights and certain benefits, right? But we're going to see in a moment decision, purpose, okay? Just like we pinned Ham, let's pin Reuben here for just a second because we'll get to all that, right? Okay. So I wanted to point that out. <clears throat> and then through the rest of chapter two for First Chronicles, uh, we continue to see uh, the genealogy going through Judah, uh, through Hezron to David, right? So that's a beautiful picture there uh, because it talks about even Boaz and Obed. And Obad was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the son of Elip. Hey, Tanya, good evening. Thank you for joining me, right? And so <clears throat> now it brings us to chapter 3. And this is when it starts to get interesting <laughs> for me. <laughs> uh, because, again, we're talking about purpose and why things were done and the decision of man, how it could offset what could have been for what should have been or what should have been what, what, what is going to be. How about that? I can even say that better, right? So in chapter three, uh, start at verse one, it says, these are the sons of David who were born in Hebron. And you remember Hebron is when David ran away from uh, Saul, and this is where he began to build his army, right? And so, but in the midst of him being there, uh, it says, the oldest was Amnon, whose mother uh, was Ahinoam. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Makkah. Uh, the fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shef, Shephiatha, whose mother was Abitel. The sixth was uh, Lithrim, Lahe, Lahe, whose mother was Igla. Now, what was so crazy about this, y'all? <laughs> it really messed me up. It just named six different kids with six different mothers. Now, if we look at that today, we would consider that to be a deadbeat dad, right? That David had just for this moment, <laughs> just for these first five verses, that he has six kids with six different women. That is not God's perfect will, y'all. And that's what we got to remind ourselves. And we know, we, we, we've gone through the story in detail, what, uh, uh, what frustration, what uh, anguish, uh, what, uh, as, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, Angela would say, an anxiety David went through, right? because of the decisions that he made. And this wasn't all the kids that he had, y'all. He had more kids than this. <laughs> and so it just created this mosh pit uh, of, of decision-making, which then created what? These different tribes. Oh, man, it's really interesting. And you get to see the, the origin of why these tribes began to have issue with one another and how we got... Uh, enemy tribes and how we got tribes that sometimes worked together and other times didn't uh, because we just didn't do things the proper way. And we have to keep that in mind, at, even as mothers and fathers today, you have to do things the proper way, right? I know the world wants us to believe that there are a multiple uh, coalition. Yeah, they want this to be a multiple coalition of things, of families, right? Uh, you know, single parent home with a mother and a, or a father or, you know, all the things that we could talk about that just makes up just this, just this, like you said, this is too much going on, right? And, and we can't afford, well, we can now, but again, we're talking about purpose. And even in the midst of all this going on, God is still weaving like a needle going through thread, purpose, 
And we'll see that <laughs> really good. And so in chapter three, it begins to talk about even Solomon's uh, descendants. And we know how many wives Solomon had, right? So I ain't going to go there, right? And the descendants of Jehoiachin and things of that nature. So now I want to go to chapter four. And this is where I want to kind of tie up uh, some of the, the dots that I, I, I began to kind of uh, put out there concerning a couple of people. Right. And and and, <laughs> and so I'll just make it plain. All right. So as we go to chapter four, I want to address. <clears throat> well, just to give a, a quick shout out in verse nine, uh, because we know everybody knows about uh, verse nine. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. Right. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. <clears throat> oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Now, in this moment, you can see systematically, God said, the Bible says that he was the most honorable of all of his brothers, Right? Yes. And at the same time, at that moment, he then prayed a prayer. Now, I can't tell you that that works for everybody and all the time. Right. No, I won't say that. But what it did was it showed us that an honorable man prayed a prayer and God heard him. Right. And so I want us to not get this twisted that if you're not doing if you're not following God in obedience and then you don't want and you wonder why your prayers are not being answered. You know, you can probably take your cue from Jabez, right? So let's sure up our position in Christ uh, as far as our our willingness and our, 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 our desire to be obedient towards him. And he'll begin to uh, show us what and how we should be praying for clarity or be praying for strategy or praying to even have understanding about what it is he wants us to do for our lives. And so I thought that that was pretty good. But <clears throat> I want to jump down to verse 38, right? Because I want to tie something together. Uh, in verse 38 of Chronicles chapter 4, it says, These were the names of some of the leaders of Simeon's wealthy clans. Their families grew, and they traveled to the region of Gerer in the east part of the valley, seeking pasture land for their flocks. Now, you guys remember this, right? When we talked about the tribes of Israel crossing over uh, to the to promised land, right? There were some people that wanted to stay on the east side of the Jordan River, right? <laughs> and this is actually where we are right now. They wanted to stay on the east side, not crossing over to the other side, to where God had promised them. And so... Here, this is what we're referring to, right? And so guess who stayed on the east side? <laughs> it says, verse 40, they found lush pastures uh, there and the land was spacious, quiet, and peaceful. Some of Ham's descendants had been living in that region. Remember whose Ham descendants were? Y'all remember? Canaan. Canaanites, Right? It says, but during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah, these leaders of Simeon invaded the region and completely destroyed the homes of the descendants of Ham and of the, the Mennonites. No trace of them remains today. What's up, Atwater? Thank you for joining me, man. Uh, who lived there and took the land for themselves because they wanted its good pastures or their flocks. Now I want to say this, y'all, because this is really interesting. If you remember the origin of Ham, Ham defiled his, or I say defiled, Ham disrespected. Yeah, probably a better word. Nah, man, he ain't shaved either. <laughs> I, I hear you try to be. You always try to be shady. So, so Ham, his origin was that he did something to his father Noah. And from that moment began this process of just foolery on his side of the family, 
And, and it's so crazy, y'all, because that's really what ended up happening, right? Because of what he did to his father, and his father gave him, a, pronounced on him a curse. And I'm not saying that his father had the power to do so, but that's what brought us to this moment, right? And so at that moment, you have the Canaanites here coming full circle where what happened? The Israelites should have dealt with the Canaanites uh, when God told them to. But what did they do? They didn't want to destroy them, right? They wanted to keep them around because they wanted to serve them. But God said, no, I needed you to get rid of them. And it's just, <laughs> it's just really crazy because purpose, it starts with the origin, right? And it started with Ham and his unwillingness uh, uh, to, 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 to be reverent to his father, right? And so God saw something in there. And so even in the moments of, of other lives, other, other sons in, in Chronicles, I, I remember there was a son, I don't even remember his father, but one of his sons, he was the oldest, but God killed him because of his wicked heart, right? And so you have, man, where, where um, uh, Ham and his descendants are their situations, it, it's coming full circle because where God, where Ham was disrespectful to his father and now God wanted to destroy them through Israel, but Israel did not. But then God comes around and in this moment in Chronicles, he said the, the, the clan of Simeon destroys Ham's descendants. And it says in verse number 41, no trace of them remains today. They killed everyone who lived there and took the land for themselves because they wanted its good pastured land. <laughs> so I just love that moment in, in, in seeing that about um, this tribe of Canaan and where it came from. And again, this is why we change our name. This is why we, we, we are not um, so uh, attached to, to our our fleshly or our earthly families history their lineage right we're not pursuing dna to see if we got other family members out there we become family through christ and in that moment when you are in the family of god we've all been grafted in adopted in and therefore we find purpose through christ and so i, I appreciate seeing what a uh, uh, uh the descendants of a family who did not choose to believe because there, there was a separation that took place. And if y'all go back and, and, and watch the video for Genesis, you'll see that separation, right? Where, where they began to do things opposite of what God called them to do. And so I love that moment where you, you don't find yourself trying to fulfill uh, the desires of your earthly family, but that of your heavenly father and his kingdom. I, I just think that's an amazing moment, right? Yeah, amen to that, sister. Uh, one more thing I want to point out, right? Because uh, that's the end of chapter four. Now we'll go to chapter five and I'll be done. And remember we talked about Reuben and Reuben being the first son of Jacob, right? And so in, in, in being the first son of Jacob, you have... Um, had his he had birthrights, right? Which is a beautiful thing. But watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in verse one of chapter five, it says the oldest son of Israel was Reuben, but since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother Joseph. Listen. And that's the word I was trying to use for Ham. Ham dishonored Ab uh, Noah. And so the same for Reuben. Reuben dishonored uh, Jacob. And so because of that, he lost something. He lost his birthright, right? And you're going to see even, even in times past, the, the, the sons of Reuben, uh, I'll just read it, y'all, because it's crazy, right? So what Reuben did was he... He affected the Reubenites, right? Because watch this. It says, for this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. 
<laughs> but I want to jump down to verse 18 to show this clarity. And I'll be done. It says, going back to them staying on the east side of the Jordan, the place where God permitted them to stay, but not where God called them to stay. What's up, Angela? Good to see you, right? This is the thing. They were supposed to move to the west side of the Jordan. That's where the promised land was. That's where Canaan was, but they did not. So watch this. Verse 18 says, there were 44,760 capable warriors uh, in the armies of Reuben, right? Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. They were all skilled in combat and armed with shields. Let's jump to verse 20. It says, they cried out to God during a battle. Well, I could have read 19. It says, they waged war against uh, the Hagarites, the, the, Jet, the Jeterites. What's up, Dominic? Uh, the Nephusites and the, the Nadabites. They cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. So the Hagarites and all their allies were defeated. The plunder taken from the Hagarites included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheets, sheep, and so on and so forth. Uh, verse 22 says, many of the Hagarites were killed in the battle because God was fighting against them. Right? So this is, again, this is showing the, the, the ebb and flow of relationship. Right. Although they were somewhere they weren't, they weren't supposed to be because of his dishonoring his father. Right. God then removed his birthright again, his in his inheritance. And again, we could talk about that. But you guys know that your inheritance has nothing to do with your salvation. Your salvation gives you uh, uh, your birthright into into his kingdom into christianity but there's an inheritance that you have to gain through that birthright that you gain through that birthright but again if you choose to dishonor your father if you choose uh, uh not to be obedient towards him you can lose not not the birth but the right the inheritance y'all <laughs> it's so crazy when you see this so watch this because i want to show this moment it says the people of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived in their land until they were taken into exile. And why were they taken into exile? Okay. Watch this. The half tribe of Manasseh was very large and spread uh, throughout the land. Verse 25. It says, but their tri these tribes were unfaithful to the God. What tribes? The brothers. Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. They were unfaithful. They worshiped the gods of the nation that God had destroyed. So the God of Israel caused King Paul of Assyria, right, who is also known as Tiglath Pileser, to invade the land and take away the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh as captives. The Assyrians ex exiled them to Hala, right, where they remain to this day. Day. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I can say this, it's not about living a legalistic lifestyle. It's about honoring the father who gave, not, how can I say this? So once you, once you accept Christ, you are then born again, right? You have come into his family, right? So you no longer begin to uh, 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 to deal with the cares of your natural family as it relates to getting into this, I have to uphold this legacy. No, you uphold the legacy of Christ. That's who I, we're named after, right? That's the name we take on. And, and at that moment, guys, as a family in God's kingdom, we are accountable to one another. We are to love one another, right? And then we are to honor our father. And when you do all those things in, in its fullness, you find yourself with this inheritance. 
And if you find yourself not, and you kind of go back and forth, then you're going to find yourself in these situations like Ham and like uh, Reuben and, and Gad and half tribe of Manasseh, right? And so ultimately, that's all I'm saying in a nutshell, right? Don't don't get so caught up in the family tree, but understand the purpose that God has for our lives. And so as we continue to travel on through Chronicles, you know, we'll get through the names but you'll begin to see some clarity and purpose in the lives of these people who kind of go back and forth in their in their faith with God. Right? All right, so that's all I got for tonight concerning these this situation. Uh, like I say, we're going to see something, we say something. If not, we're going to move on. Uh, so let's pray. Dear Grace and Heavenly Father, God, just thank you uh, for allowing us to hold true God, to what you've called us to do. God, and that's to uh, go through your word, uh, not be in such a hurry, God, but to understand that uh, all that you have for us to see uh, through the example of your people in the Old Testament, God, it helps us to be better equipped for what we have to do uh, even today. So God, I love you. I thank you. God, I pray for the endurance of your people. Uh, God, as we work through uh, the names and the genealogy, uh, God, but that uh, you will grant us uh, clarity in those small moments and help us uh, in our journey today. God, I pray for Aaron as he prepares for, for Monday. Uh, God, that you will continue to uh, give us strategic ways to, to make your word plain. Uh, God, that someone needs to hear. Uh, so God, I ask that you would uh, strengthen him uh, and give him wisdom and strength, God, that he can uh, declare your word uh, as you would have it to be so. Thank you, and we love you. Uh, we pray for any anyone, God, that is in need today. Uh, for whatever reason, God, this is the National Day of Prayer, uh, God. But we don't just celebrate just because, God, but uh, we find ourselves doing it on a daily basis. And so we thank you for this week, God, that uh, you have allowed us to mature and grow in, uh, in your word. And so, God, we'll forever give your name the praise. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. That's what we got. Uh, we're going to turn on through, and uh, we'll see y'all on the other side of success. I'm out.